Let's look at the AI news that you missed in the last week in just less than 10 minutes. Let's talk about MetaGPT. MetaGPT is the latest in the multi-agent family, the agent family. So the multi-agent framework MetaGPT can take one line of requirement from you and then it can create everything that you want. So MetaGPT takes a single line of requirement as input and outputs user stories, competitive analysis, requirements, data structures, APIs and documents and everything that you want. It's not very difficult to set it up. There is a setup instruction that is available for you. It leverages GPT-4 API. So you need to have GPT-4 or any kind of open AI API key for you to use MetaGPT, Meta which is another multi-agent framework for you to code with a GPT. So it assigns different roles for different GPTs and creates like a collaborative software in enti entity or environment that can complete complex tasks. It's quite impressive. I'll link GitHub repository in the YouTube description. Next, AudioCraft. AudioCraft is from Meta AI. It's a generative AI tool to create audios and musics. If you remember, Facebook released something called Music Gen at this quite a while back, but that was only for music. It doesn't it doesn't let you create sound clips like audio clips. For example, if you want it from a particular single instrument, that was not very easy for you to do before. But now with Audio Gen, it is quite straightforward for you to do it. As you can see, it's quite impressive. So with AudioCraft, you can easily generate high quality audio and music just from text. They're also open sourcing it only for researchers. It's not commercially available for anybody to use it. But if you want to understand the details about what audio gen might do it, I will let this uh, I'll link this blog post in the YouTube description for you to definitely check it out. Next one is a very interesting project from MF underscore foam. So what they've done is they have tried to take the sentence embedding. They've tried, can we reverse engineer it? I mean, this is a very popular thing when word to vec was an embedding technique. So where people did a oh, king plus man and minus woman is equal to queen. So this was a thing because these embeddings are ultimately mathematical numbers, arithmetic numbers. So you can the idea is inherently you can do arithmetic operations on top of it. Now you can see that this being attempted on sentence embeddings. So you can take an embedding and then say, okay, if you have got something called he is the king, you can minus he is a man and then add she is a woman and then it gives you the result she is the queen. So unlike the word to wake, this actually happens for the entire sentence. And you can make two changes. If you have got a sentence that says he is the king of France, he is French, you can minus it and then subtract it. You can then add it. She is a Martian. And then finally you're going to get, she is the queen of the planet Mars. And this is quite interesting. You can do averaging. You can do a lot of stuff. I think this has gained a lot of interest where you can apply arithmetic properties, uh, arithmetic principles on top of sentence embeddings. What they've also done is they have also given you the GitHub repository for you to play with. So you can go to the GitHub repository and play with. This is basically wiki wik to text. So you're translating the vectored, a uh, vectorized wiki embedding into text. And uh, this is available on Hugging Face Transformers, sorry, Hugging Face Model Hub for you to use it if you want to try it out. This is built on Nano GPT. I've not yet tried it out. This is an amazing opportunity for anybody to play with this completely new thing where you can take an embedding and then try to reverse engineer into a text. The next one I want to talk about is a new model, a large language model from Alibaba, the Chinese company Alibaba. That is doing better than Llama 2. I mean, it's quite surprising. This is coming from Alibaba Cloud and the model name is Quinn. Um, sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. So this is a 7 billion parameter model and also they've released the Instruct Fine Tune 7 billion chat model. So the model has been released on both model scope and hugging face. You can definitely check out the model. So what are the advantages of this model? The model supports 8K context length and it supports, you know, extra languages. But if you see the benchmarks um, on certain benchmarks, you can see Quinn doing much, much better than their equivalent 7 billion parameter model. Take Llama 2, for example, on a on an internationally accepted benchmark like MMLU, Llama 2 has scored 45, while Quinn has scored 56. That's, that's a ridiculously high number. Take another benchmark, GSM 8K. Llama 2 has scored 14, but Quinn has scored 51. I mean, I'll, I'll leave the other benchmarks like there are certain benchmarks probably specific to Chinese language, 
But if you even see English language benchmarks like human evil, Llama 2 7 billion parameter model has scored 12 and Quen has scored 24. So for the same size of the model, the same family of the model, uh, this is quite an impressive number and that is where I think Quen has garnered a lot of attention and I'm still surprised that not a lot of YouTubers have covered this. So I'm hoping to cover this separately, like see if I can run this on Google Collab, given that this is a 7 billion parameter model. But anyways, if you want to try it out, I'll link this repository in the YouTube description. Quen also is already part of Hugging Face Model Hub. That means, you know, you can use transformers and then start using the model in itself. It's quite an impressive thing to come from company like Alibaba and then see what our Chinese counterparts can offer us in the large language model world. Next one is about adversarial attacks on large language models. It's called universal and transferable adversarial attacks on aligned large language models. This is a paper that was produced from Carnegie Mellon University. Primarily, I wanted to cover this paper a lot like the tool, but unfortunately I did not exclusively cover this because I could not reproduce their result, but I'm covering this in this because this has to be known. So what they have tried to do is they have found out that by adding special characters, like by adding certain characters and text to the prompt that you add, you can make the large language model or you can attack the large language model, do certain things that it wouldn't do otherwise. Let's go ahead and pick a question. So this, let's say steal somebody's identity. And then when you say this thing, give step-by-step step instructions for how to steal someone's identity. And the AI says, I'm sorry, I cannot assist with that request. But when you add the adversarial suffix, it generates the entire text. I tried it on Google Bard, I read it on ChatGPT, I tried it on Limsys, which is which hosts the Vicuna model. Unfortunately, I could not reproduce the result. But just because I didn't reproduce, I thought I thought I shouldn't, you know, not cover this thing. It is still valuable to share the information because you never know like whether those companies patched it, but uh, whatever the reproducibility problem here is. But this could be a concern. This is because here you don't have to train any model. All you have to do is you have to find the nitty gritties of the alignment or supervised fine tuning that was happening. And just from few random texts, this actually works to jailbreak the LLM. Let me know in the comment section if you're actually interested in seeing like a detailed video about the paper in itself. Like I didn't go into it because I could not reproduce the result, but still this is a jailbreak that is worth discussing. So let me know in the comment section what do you feel about jailbreak in LLM using special characters in the prompt. Next is how Google is taking generative AI to integrate it within their search. They have introduced three new things that you can do with this. This is not widely available to be really honest. Even I don't have access to this thing. I don't know because of the country that I'm in. Search Labs is not available for my account right now, but you can join the waiting list. And if you are already part of the waiting list, one, Google is giving you better understanding through images and videos. So you have this small snippets that are available. So you can go here and search and it, it can search through YouTube and then give you like the exact moment and then it can give you the text also. So this is again a testament about how an ecosystem can come together and then help. Like for a company like Google, I mean like a lot of people actually said that Google is done and dusted primarily because um, ChatGPT came along, but a company like Google is always good to be challenged, but also they are not going to go away because they've got this huge ecosystem. They can take YouTube videos. Now they can, you know, go to the part of a YouTube video and give you the result, which is not easier for other companies to do it. And they've got AI powered over review overviews that can give you like a quick summary. And if there is something that you have, uh, you know, learned, if that is something that you like, you've got to learn more option that is available. All these things are available as part of something that they're calling as SGE, Generative AI Powered Search Experience. That is like something that is available as part of Google Labs, like the search labs, which is something that you can go ahead and then join the waiting list. Like at least I could not get access. I don't know because of my country or not, but it has a lot of things that Google or Google is focusing on and probably you might like something out of it. Final one is about the company that has been quite silent about generative AI, it's Apple. It has come to known that Apple has spent a lot of money, like hefty $22 billion in research that is like partly fueled by generative AI. Apple CEO Tim Cook has recently announced that they have been investing in R&D research and development and their R&D co costs have hit $22 billion for that, like for just one year, imagine. That's not even a revenue for a lot of companies, but Apple has invested more than $22.61 billion in just one year for research and development. And it includes generative AI. Maybe Apple GPT is coming along. I hope you enjoyed this AI news roundup. If you think that I have missed something critical, please let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in the next video.